Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter what we're going to take a look at is process thinking and the four process thinking principles that I use in order to problem solve. Um, so we're going to go process thinking. And in particular, the four process principles I use in order that I can go into any workspace, understand what I'm doing, and apply the right techniques and tools. Um, most people think that you know process improvement is all about the toolkit that you have. You know, we go and look. Uh, we go and look at uh, maybe someone like Toyota. And we go and say, okay, what's what's the world class way of problem solving? And we go, oh, it's the A three technique. It's the five Y's technique, and all of this kind of all of this kind of good stuff. Whereas in point of fact, forget the tools, understand principles, and you can pick whatever tool you want out of any toolkit to solve the problem that's in front of you. So, process thinking. This is the centerpiece of everything. It's the centerpiece of every tool you use. Start at the beginning. You should be doing an FMEA. Design FMEA. Process FMEA. This process should be at the center of it. You have a money making process. And by the way, I don't mean you specifically have a money-making process. You have a product that you're designing. The design process makes money. It makes products that your customers want to buy. So I don't mean you have a particularly money-making process, but then once you've designed it, you manufacture it. And each machine is a money-making process because you're producing the product that your customers want. All the intermediate steps, storing it, moving it, inspecting it, all of that crap, that's waste. You have money making processes and they have inputs and they have outputs. This is at the center of FMEA. It is at the center of design FMEA, process FMEA. It's at the center of ISO 9001. It's at the center of control plans. It's at the center of SPC. It's at the center of 5S. It's at the center of all the lean stuff. When you're trying to understand how much product you need, putting pull systems in, all of these things, the, the process thinking is at the center of everything. So that, is at the center of every tool I use. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, if I have a money-making process that's misbehaving, what are the principles that I'm going to bring to bear on this process to get it under control, to make it behave, to make it make money? Well, here are the four principles. The first one is, Inputs, control, outputs. 
So if you're going to draw a control plan, in other words, these things, this end, guarantee this side of the diagram. So if you've got a problem with this side of the diagram, there is only one place to solve your problem. It's here. Inputs, control, outputs. Generate a control plan. Here, what does a control plan do? It fixes inputs. Rigid, unmoving, you get consistency here and you can hit any target your customer asks for. So inputs control the outputs. Now what is it about the inputs that I'm really obsessed about? Well I'm, in, I'm obsessed about variability. So variation in your process, into your process, is always going to equal variation out. So what these things are about is the laws of physics. How do I fix a problem? I bring the laws of physics to bear on your process. Now unless the laws of physics don't apply in your company, I can fix anything with the right laws of physics. That's what we're doing. Bring the laws of physics to bear. So what is it I'm particularly interested in? Variability. I want these inputs. You know, some of them are settings, things like time, temperature, speed. I want them fixed. What else do I want fixed? Maintenancey type stuff. I don't know. Filter cleanliness, maybe. It's a, it's a maintenancey type input. It's not a, it's not a setting. But I want them fixed. I want them as repeatable as they can possibly be. Because if the filter cleanliness is allowed to move, and then I start to adjust the time and the temperature to try and buy that off, I can only make the situation a complete and total disaster. If that is moving, fix it. Don't try and adjust these to buy this nonsense off here. Yeah, so variation in always equals variation out. So if you've got filter variability and you don't fix that, you choose to move the time, the temperature and the speed to try and buy it off. Now you've got four variables moving around. You've got a disaster on your hands. So you go from this problem, maybe stepping outside the tolerances, you don't fix this and you mess with these. Well now what you're gonna get, you're gonna get this type of problem. Self inflicted disaster. You're doing it to yourselves. Fix the input variables. Next principle. Variation first. Worry about hitting targets. Second, we want rid of the variability, we want rid of this nonsense. Um, in order to adjust a process, in order to hit a target, you've got to know where you are. Where am I? This is your current, this is your current graph. By the way, plot the graph, see if you've got this nonsense going on. If you've got this going on in your process, there's no point trying to hit a target. How do you adjust? You don't know where you are. Yeah, am I, am I up here? Am I down here? Am I, am I in the middle here? Where, where am I? So if you don't know where you are, how can you possibly adjust to target? 
you cannot hit targets until you have consistency and then you can do that variation first targets second because if you have lots of variation where are you where is your process where is it currently performing if you don't know that you can't adjust it you can't improve it to somewhere new you got to get rid of this nonsense first so inputs control outputs variation in equals variation out I'm always going to tackle variability first and I'm going to worry about hitting the targets second by the way this is easy to fix this takes months to sort out this takes minutes to sort out so this is super important and finally work on the process not the product okay work on the process not the product now who who gets obsessed with the product who makes you constantly look at the product well of course unfortunately your customer is on the phone chasing your late orders on the phone talking to you about defects that you've sent them all that kind of good stuff and you get obsessed with the product and once you've reworked it, re-inspected it, remade it, and knife and forked it out the door, what do you do? <sighs> well, you typically relax and think you've done a good job. What do you never do? You never go back to the process that created all this crap and go and sort it out. And in three weeks time, what are you doing? You're remaking, re-inspecting, reworking. And you're doing it all again extra effort just eating into your profits eating up cash because you don't go and work on the process work on the process not the product and what's the process consist of inputs list them control them audit them list them control them audit them apply those four principles work on the inputs get rid of the variation of the inputs do that first before you start looking at targets and finally constantly work on the process constantly work on better inputs better suppliers better quality better machines better auditing and you'll just make piles and piles of cash because you'll just please the hell out of your customers your customers cannot get enough of great products from great suppliers and they come from people that use these four process thinking principles use them and make more money